For several years now, I've had the idea to drive most, if not all, of Idaho on unpaved forest and backcountry roads. In July of 2019, I set out to give this a try, starting from about 40 miles north of Boise in hopes of getting to the Canadian border on as little pavement as possible. To begin the trip, I drove up from Boise to just east of Garden Valley, Idaho, on the banks Loman Road, or Highway 22. From here, the off-pavement part of the journey began, after a turn north towards Deadwood Reservoir. On the way there, the road heads onto a ridge with some great camping locations and views that stretch the Sawtooth Mountains over to the east. Then it heads down to Deadwood Reservoir. This scenic 3,000 acre body of water is a great place for camping and water sports. There are several dedicated campgrounds on the shore along with several other individual campsites sprinkled in between along the road. After passing the reservoir, we're taken up to Deadwood Summit at nearly 7,000 feet, and then down into the very pretty Tyndall Meadows. This is where I was able to launch my drone for the first time to take some aerial shots. I'm using a DJI Mavic Air in these videos. I'm still pretty new to shooting with the drone, so excuse some of the jerky motion in the shots. From Tyndall Meadows, I continued north past the community of Yellow Pine onto Forest Road 340, which you can get a taste of in this time lapse. The first campsite of the trip was between Yellow Pine and Edwardsburg, near the beginnings of Big Creek. It was a nice quiet spot, except for the thunderstorm that rolled through around 10 p.m. After that night's storm, I woke up the next morning to a foggy and wet campsite. The fog burned off pretty quickly though, and I headed a few miles up the road to hike to Lick Lake along the Lick Creek Trail. This is a short but strenuous hike up to the lake with about 2,000 feet in elevation gain in only about 3 miles. The lake was a great spot to eat lunch and take some pictures, and then the hike down was nice and fast. Once I finished up with the hike, I kept heading north and west on Forest Road 340, which took me over Elk Summit. 
This provided sweeping views to the west. The route along here was really windy, with a lot of up and down. I only made a total of about 30 miles before stopping at Schieffer Campground on the south fork of the Salmon River for the night. This was the warmest camp of the trip. When I arrived around 6 p.m. it was still up in the 80s. It cooled off nicely though for a pleasant night of sleep next to the river. Day 3 started with a drive up to Warren Summit, and then down into the town of Warren. Warren is an interesting stop as it's kind of half ghost town and half living town, with a store, residences, a forest ranger station, and an airstrip. The main street has a lot of historic buildings like a hotel, dance hall, and a school with a backwards end. When heading west out of Warren, you can continue on the Warren Wagon Road or head north on Forest Road 246 towards the Salmon River. The road down to the river valley featured several large switchbacks that lead to the river and Manning Bridge, which is about 10 miles outside the town of Riggins, which I headed into to resupply and fuel up. After that, I headed north again on Forest Road 221 into the Nez Perce National Forest. I continued on Forest Road 309 up onto Hungry Ridge, where I found a campsite surrounded by ponderosa pines and a great view.
On the morning of day four, I dropped down from Hungry Ridge to cross the south fork of the Clearwater River. After a few minutes on State Highway 14, I then headed north again on Forest Road 648, which took me to McComas Meadows, which you can see here. There's some private property around the meadows, as well as a Forest Service campground simply called Camp 58. From the meadows, the road headed up to China Point and a stretch of the Elk City Wagon Road, which was one of the roughest portions of the trip. After quite a while at higher elevations, the road dropped down to the Selway River, which led out to the town of Lowell and Highway 12. I then took Highway 12 east for about 60 miles to Parachute Hill Road, which goes north to the Lolo Motorway. The Lolo Motorway is about a 100 mile stretch of single lane dirt road that closely follows the path of Lewis and Clark. There are several signs along the way marking historical points of interest. I only stayed on the motorway for a short time as I turned north from Cayuse Junction onto Forest Road 581. I camped for the night along Cayuse Creek in Clearwater National Forest. Day 5 began with a drive along Toboggan Ridge on Forest Road 581. This road was both narrow and overgrown, which made for slow going. When it did open up, there were some nice views though. After coming down from the ridge, I went north on Forest Road 255, which offers some great camping areas along Independence Creek. Continuing north, I crossed into Montana for a short time, where I turned west on Forest Road 320. This brought me to Missoula Lake, which is very pretty and has a nice campground beside it. I then dropped down to the beautiful St. Joe River, where the road becomes paved and follows the path of the river. Lots of great camping spots here along the St. Joe, which might have been the most scenic of all the rivers that I crossed. I headed north again on Forest Road 456, which took me to the town of Wallace via a few old railroad tunnels, which were a surprise to see. After a meal in Wallace, I kept going north into the Coeur d'Alene National Forest, where I wrapped up the longest day of driving of the trip and set up camp as it got dark. To 
begin day six, I headed northeast on Forest Road 412 towards Lake Ponderay and the town of Clark Fork, which sits on its west side. This is a really nice area that I'd like to spend some more time in. From Clark Fork, I made my way to Bonner's Ferry on the highway. Then I headed up Forest Road 435, which would be the final stretch of unpaved road. This took me over Canuck Pass and to within a few miles of the Canadian border in Canixu National Forest. That night I camped just south of Canuck Pass along Keno Creek, which would be the final campsite of the journey. All told, I drove over 700 miles during the six days that took me through parts of eight national forests and over many more mountain ranges and rivers. For more details on this trip, including Gaia GPS tracks for each day, head over to theurgencytomove.com slash IOP. Please like and subscribe if you found the video interesting. Thanks for watching.